Hey everyone, it is State Representative Tom Morrison and I promised that we would be doing more of these interviews with important uh, community leaders around our district about ways that we can help in this uh, in these un unprecedented times. And I have on the phone with me right now the retired director, recently retired director of the Palatine Township Senior Center. So please welcome on the phone, Carol Reagan. Carol, thank, thanks for joining me today. Oh, Tom, it's my pleasure. Well, um, I wanted to reach out to you because one thing that is just so important right now is that we maintain relationships. We maintain, while we, you know, we're, we're maintaining uh, physical distancing, we really can't afford to allow people to be isolated at this time, especially our senior population. Uh, do you have any, have any opening remarks um, that would be helpful to, to people? Absolutely. The whole reason that senior centers were created was to reduce social isolation, to provide socialization and opportunity for older adults to use the skills and talents that they have developed over a lifetime and let them help others, teach others, and also learn new things. Because of the COVID virus, a lot of senior centers have stopped group activities, including the Palatine Township Senior Center. So it's very important during this time that people maintain their social interaction. We as human beings are hardwired to be social animals. And so when we're forced not to be social, it takes a toll on us both physically and mentally. Yeah. So given the, um, you know, these are, these can be frightening times for people, especially if we're watching the news a lot. Um, and how important is it to give our seniors something other to focus on? Well, first of all, none of us should be focusing on the news all the time. It's going to make us all really twitchy and anxious. Right. So eating right, you know, don't hit the junk food too much. A little bit for comfort is fine, but everything in moderation. Yeah. Maintaining activity. Make sure that you're exercising. This is not the time to start something grand and new, but, you know, walk, stretch. Make sure that you're maintaining your balance and flexibility. Uh -huh. Listening to your body. You don't want to sit in front of the TV the whole time or and sit in front of the computer. You want to get up and move because your body needs that to stay healthy. Right. And we've make had... Sure that and make sure that you're drinking enough fluids. You know, staying hydrated will help you stay healthy. Right. Yeah, one thing I was going to add is just because there is an executive order right now to stay in place, that doesn't mean you have to stay indoors. If you're feeling yeah. physically up to it, uh, get outside, get some fresh air, get some sunshine. Um, you can maintain your distance from, from others, but still uh, get out of the house a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. And just because it's a little gray outside doesn't mean that you should stay inside. Right. You know, as long as the weather is cooperating, it's not pouring rain or, God forbid, snow. Right. Uh, you know, get out, get moving. Yeah. Or if you don't want to be outside, walk up and down the hallway or up and down your stairs. Make sure you hold on to the handrail especially if you have pets because they have a tendency to be underfoot when you least expect it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. We want to try to avoid any unnecessary trips to, to the hospital because of, Absolutely. uh, yeah, just, just, um, not being careful or, you know, we want to avoid accidents as best as possible. Exactly. Um, well, this, this video is going out to, uh, a number of, uh, people in our community and, uh, in my, my different uh, channels that I have, and uh, one thing that we keep hearing about is just how important it is to reach out to our elderly populations. Um, we, we talked about some of the physical needs right now, but talk about some of the emotional and mental health needs that seniors might have at this time. If people are anxious, hearing from friends or loved ones can be really reassuring. Yeah. So reaching out to them on the phone if 
the older adult has the capability of doing FaceTime or a Zoom um, using technology to connect. Mm -hmm. uh, making sure that they are not feeling alone. Right. Yeah, it doesn't have to be anything more uh, elaborate than just a phone call, right? I mean, uh, uh, a lot of us are spending more time at home. And so, um, you know, while you're, you're talking about some of the electronic means of uh, communicating with someone, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be by FaceTime or Zoom or some something more. It could you just be picking up the phone, right? Just hearing that human it could, voice. It could be picking up the phone and going old school, writing yeah. a note or just having a grandchild draw a picture. Yes, I like that. Some kind of some kind of little craft project. Um, some of my friends' children have been doing uh, elaborate paper cutting or, you know, just any kind of craft project that would be easy to mail. You don't want to make yourself crazy trying to get the stuff in the mail, but something that would say to the older adult, we're thinking about you. Yeah. We, we want to make sure that you know that you're loved. Right. I love that. And, and just, do you have any conversation starters uh, that you could suggest, you know, what are some of the things that, um, I mean, I have my own ideas, uh, but I'd like to hear what you, what your thoughts are. What are some of the things that grandparents enjoy hearing from their children or, or grandchildren, or in some cases, great grandchildren and vice versa? What are some things that, uh, you think children could learn from their, from their elderly loved ones? Hearing what the grandparents' life was like when they were their age. You know, where did you grow up? What was it like? What was school like? Did you have a favorite subject? Did you have a favorite hobby? Did you have pets? Uh -huh. How did you end up living where you're living? Some people have moved around during their lifetime. Some people are lifelong residents of the, the village that they're living in now. So family stories, what was mom or dad like when they were my age? Yeah. Uh, you know, I was also thinking of just some of the economic hardships since we are going to experience, we're experiencing an economic hardship right now and probably for weeks and months. Yes. Um, one of the things I appreciated learning from my parents was what it was like uh, living through the Great Depression. What, yes. what are some of the, the um, things that your family did to cope um, through that situation? How did it shape your character or, or shape your values and things like that? Yeah, I think that that's a, an excellent idea. Yeah. Um, well, any, do, anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, because I think, again, one thing that this is going to teach us, we all know that um, uh, these circumstances were, were foisted upon us pretty rapidly. <laughs> And we're yes. all having to be very nimble and, and just uh, learning to adjust. But I mean, we are, as humans, we're social creatures. And um, while I, I miss seeing people, I miss shaking hands, I miss the hugs and, and all of that. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like you and, you know, just trying to sort out a way of, of safely keeping these emotional connections and meeting physical needs that we need to do. So uh, anything exactly. that you have, uh, any final thoughts? There are a couple of resources for older adults that might be looking for something to occupy their time. Mather Lifeways has uh, something called Teletopics uh -huh. that you can register for and be on a conference call. And the number for that is 888-600-2560. Okay. Or you can email teletopics at mather.com. And there are Ivy League online courses. You can, if you have access to a computer, you can just Google Ivy League online courses. And there are over 450 online courses that are available for free wow. through all eight Ivy League um, colleges. Sure. Yeah, and, that, and that's really the exciting thing about, about technology is we basically have uh, so much information uh, at our fingertips now. And it's not just 
the 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 twenty four seven news. That's not the kind of information I'm talking about. But right. um, just you know the courses that you're talking about, um, the ability to go on virtual tours of museums. Uh, there's just a, an amazing array of things that we can do that are really enriching. Um, I saw uh, recently uh, Yo Yo Ma giving a, a cello concert online. I just thought, yeah, this is yes. this is really neat. You know, just what what we have the ability to do. And I'd I'd rather hear with with my own ears in a concert hall. But um, in the meantime, there's a lot that we can do. Uh, exactly. So well, great. Well, Karen, uh, Carol, sorry. Thanks again for joining me, and um, I, I just appreciate this, and hopefully we can continue other conversations like this. And when we get beyond uh, this this strange time that we're living through right now, uh, what are some ways that people could help during the just more routine days? How can we be helping our senior population? Uh, there are lots of opportunities for volunteers through the Palatine Township Senior Center. They are always looking for people to help deliver meals to the homebound. Yeah. People have specific um, skills or expertise. Um, they're looking for people to teach classes. Uh, so contact the volunteer coordinator, Peg Schutz, okay. um, at the Senior Center. Um, I know the social services staff is working from home, so it would need to be after this time is over. Right. But like I said, they're always looking for volunteers. Yeah, great. All right, Carol, thank you. Be well. And, thank uh, you, you too. Yeah, have a great day. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye now.